Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's TOC podcast. I'm Joe Weichert, chair of O'Reilly's Tools of Change Conference. And if you want to see everything that we're up to with TOC these days involving other products and events, please stop by our website at O'Reilly.com slash TOC. Today's podcast is brought to you by Publishers Weekly, and they're our event partner for TOC. Be sure to watch for regular TOC coverage and original content on PublishersWeekly.com and in their print edition. I'm joined today by Kevin Broccoli, CEO of BIM Publishing Services. Kevin and I spoke earlier about uh, the future of indexing, and I wanted to get him on a podcast interview to drill down a little bit deeper on that. So, Kevin, welcome to this TOC podcast. Thank you. So, Kevin, let's start things off with a somewhat controversial topic here. Do we really even need indexes in the digital age? You know, after all, a reader can search for anything that they want in the book and, and find the results. So what's the purpose of an index? That's actually an argument that I hear a lot, Joe. And I think, really, there's a lot of examples that I could give to be able to show the benefits of an index over just using find or search in, um, in, in, in EPUB. Um, one example of that, I have my iPhone here, for example, and I have the book Tribal Leadership that I was reading on the uh, Kindle app on the iPhone. And it has a, a search box there, and if I put in a term like relationships, which is a term, of course, that's really important in a book that's on leadership, and I do a search, it ends up finding, I, you probably can't really see that, but it ends up finding 108 instances of that term. And it's true that it shows the term in context, it shows the sentence that it's in, and so that helps a little bit, but I don't have the time to look through 108 instances, and, and I'm sure no one else wants to do that either. Many of the times that it shows the term, it's really just passing mention. It's really not relevant. It doesn't have any, any meat there uh, to the information. Um, that's very different from, for example, if I cancel that out, this book does have an index at the end of it. Uh, and it shows the term relationships, and it has 15 sub-entries. It's uh, much less than 108 sub-entries, and they have to do with things such as codependent relationships, uh, forming relationships, language in relationships, shared values. So there's real information there. Someone can see very quickly which of those sub-entries has the information that they need, and unfortunately the publisher didn't link this index, mm -hmm. But that's certainly very possible, and it, and it does exist in some um, ebooks. And then, if it were linked, the reader would be able to click on that sub entry and immediately go to the exact discussion that was chosen by a human indexer. The key is that it was a human indexer that took the time to read through the paragraphs, to select the information, to choose the wording so that there's really quality information that has been found. And that's not what you get from just using search in an ebook. Yeah, so you're comparing sort of the brute force of just a raw text search versus, let's say, the human curation that comes with a well formed index, right? Exactly. Okay. So when we talked before, you, you told me a little bit about what you guys are doing with what you call index mashups. Can you talk a little bit about those? Yes, we have a website that we started that's at indexmasher.com. And basically, we're we are mashing up indexes to books. And what that means is we're taking indexes from various books that are on related topics. Uh, for example, if it's on something like uh, programming languages or, or a particular uh, area of programming, say, say JavaScript as an example, it would be indexes to a bunch of books on JavaScript that we mash together. And what that results in is the ability to be able to search the index along with its sub-entries and while you're looking for specific information, it might be in various books. We did that. We, we did it for, uh, we're doing actually business books right now, and we did it for five of Seth Godin's books that incidentally didn't have indexes. So we wrote the indexes to them and then mashed it together, and it's, and it's up there on Index Masher. The other thing that we started to do as well, and we started to do it with Poke the Box, which is on IndexMasher.com, is to put in the actual paragraphs of information, two to five perhaps paragraphs of information that the index entries refer to. So you can see how helpful that would be. Instead of something like Amazon's look inside feature, 
where someone can look in the book, but they didn't get to choose which pages are, are available to look at. They're not really able to see if the book contains the concepts that they, they're interested in. And instead of just downloading the first chapter of a book like, like you can if you have a Kindle, uh, I can't count how many times I've bought books on my Kindle because I liked the first chapter, the introductory chapter. It seemed like it would have the information I wanted. But then as I got a little more uh, into the book, I discovered that it really didn't. Uh, so to, books are one of the only things that we buy before we're able to really look at them thoroughly. Yeah. And this enables someone to really get into the book, to get into it, to see if it really has the exact information that they want, and even read portions of it to be able to, to, uh, to see if it has what, what they need. So, so, Kevin, I think you, you brought up a really interesting point in that last answer about samples. And, and one of the frustrations I have as a, as a consumer is that when that content comes down to me and I'm making that buying decision, there's oftentimes so much front matter that there's not a whole lot of material to read to get a sense for the book. And even in the cases where there is enough, um, I would love to be able to see the index. And I'm kind of wondering, why don't retailers and publishers maybe put the index in with that sample so you can get a feel for both, right? Exactly, and even even the the occasions where uh, with with Amazon with the look inside feature, sometimes they make the index available that you can see the index. But even still, with some index entries, that's helpful, sure. But if they could click on those entries and see the content, publishers it seems can become afraid of sharing the content, and sometimes authors too, the content of, of their books. When in reality sharing that content is what will actually sell more books for them. I'm sure of it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and talking a little bit more about, about this whole index mashup idea, again, as a consumer, the one thing I would love to have is my entire ebook library to have a common index. And I don't mean just the ability to search across the raw text of, uh, of all those books, but rather pulling all the indexes together in a very intelligent fashion so that I can have one central place to go to. So, do you, do you think that's going to happen anytime soon? Well, you're probably aware that on the Kindle app or on the Kindle, uh, the Kindle device itself, you can search across libraries, but again, that's just search, and I right. know that's not what you mean. You're uh, referring specifically to an index that was created by a human. And obviously, in order for a human-created index to be available for personal libraries, millions of personal libraries, that wouldn't be feasible in itself, but there is a way to do it. Um, if more publishers decided to use human indexers to take the indexes that they have in their books, and we have to remember these, these indexes already exist, they've already had them written, they're in the books. So if they were to have human indexers, mash them up like we're doing on Index Masher, and then make those indexes available, not only could users, uh, could readers be able to search that index and be able to use it for shopping purposes to find related books on similar topics, etc. But also, uh, it wouldn't be that complicated to be able to come up with a system in which the, uh, the user is presented with an option where the index can display only the index entries to the books that he actually has on his different devices. Mm -hmm. And uh, there he would have, in essence, uh, a personal index to his personal library of books. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty much what I'm after. So as a reminder, uh, folks, I'm speaking with Kevin Broccoli of BIM Publishing Services. And today's podcast is brought to you by TOC's event partner, Publishers Weekly. Now, Kevin, I'd love to see indexes move from being, you know, I guess I'd look at them as static entities today to becoming more living resources. So... You know, if I'm reading a book about a current technology and I look up a phrase that's been in the news lately, I would love for the resulting index entries to, to automatically pull the links uh, from the latest and most popular news articles and blog pieces and so forth. That would all need to be user customizable because I know there's a lot of people that don't want that sort of thing. But if it's an option, you could turn on or off and then kind of calibrate as you see fit. Is that something you see happening in the short term future? Yes, it's certainly possible. In fact, we started to do it to a limited extent with Poke the Box. Okay. Um, if you go to that book on indexmasher.com, you'll see with some entries, like for example, I think uh, Chris Anderson, uh, under the A's, Anderson, Chris, that 
if you're to hover above it, then you can also um, do a, a Google search and a search for his books that occur on Amazon just by, just by a single click. Um, and there's some other examples we started to play around with there too. It can't be done for every index entry, obviously. Like for example, we did an index for the War of Art, Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art, that's up there on Index Masher. It was a, it was a book that didn't have an index. And um, the term, for example, there's a, the term art that's in the index. Well, to f find every news article or blogs that have to do with the word art, it's too general. Right. However, there is also um, a sub-entry that says versus craft. And uh, to pull in blog entries, recent blog entries or, or maybe even news articles, that have to do with a concept that's more specific like that of art versus craft then yes, that, that could be very valuable information. So not for every index entry, but for specific ones, then it could be very useful and it can be done. It's not that complicated of a thing to implement. Yeah, I, I've often described to people that I feel like we're at the stage in, in the ebook world that uh, television was at in the early days where many of those, those initial programs were nothing more than radio programs in front of a camera, right? And it took years for people to sort of appreciate the technology and understand what it could do. And I think that's true for ebooks in general, but I think it's really true for indexes in particular and how these things could really grow. And right now we're just looking at them through the, through the lens of, of a print index that's existed for you know, hundreds of years. And we need to kind of maintain that, but sort of push it aside as well and think beyond that and, and get, get into the capabilities of the, of the tablets and the mobile devices and so forth that we have access to now, right? Right, because even though I'm talking about um, the importance of using humans, it's not like I'm against automation altogether. Uh, there should really be a marriage between the two, and that's what will create something that's very rich and useful. Yeah, I totally agree. And and I, when you and I spoke before, um, we talked about the future of indexing. You know, I think I made it pretty clear to you that I've seen really well done indexes and maybe poor, poorly done indexes, and. You know, there's a huge difference there, and but there's a huge value to one that's really well done and has all the synonyms that you're looking for and so forth. So with that in mind, last question for you, Kevin. What are some of the ways that you feel that indexes and indexing are going to evolve, uh, evolve in the future? Well, other than what we've already talked about, uh, mashing indexes, using them in e-books, etc., having indexes for personal libraries of information, um, it's also important to, to realize that indexes can be useful beyond just books, whether that be physical or, or e-books. Any type of content, uh, it, it's better served, it's better searched, and it's easier to find information if there's a human-created index. Um, even, even though we're talking about the future, some of this has been done already. So the idea of it being something in the future is that of more people realizing the benefits of it. For example, uh, for the U.S. Department of, of Energy, we did some work because they realized that a simple search engine wasn't enough. It didn't supply enough relevant information. And they wanted their, their readers, their users, to, to find the information very quickly. It's the same thing with uh, work that we did for a company that um, they wrote content for courses for doctors and nurses. Well, they want those doctors and nurses to find that content very quickly. And if they find exactly what they need, well, there's more chance that they're going to sign up for the course, and so, in, in essence, they make a, a sale. So there's monetary benefits there, too. So there are some that have recognized it already, but I see that um, in, even though quality doesn't always seem to win, uh, Wonder Bread was the dominant bread for, for many, many years, but look where it is now. In, in the end, quality does seem to win out, and so I think indexing will become more and more common uh, just like with uh, a lot of, um, we have human curators of information now that are making information available on the web, and so uh, human indexing, too, will be something that will be seen as more and more valuable as time goes on. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I'm obviously very excited about the future of, of digital books and publishing, but in particular, I, I can't wait to see how index continue to change in the years ahead. So, Kevin Broccoli of BIM Publishing Services, thanks so much for being part of today's TOC podcast. Thank you. I appreciate it.